Hey guys, it's Clovis, and today we're going to do the Professional League Vitz race, or the Yaris race, depending on what region you are at. So, let's go through some of the more obvious things about this event. You can only race using either of the Vitz or Yaris that exist in the game. And obviously, you're going to buy the better one, and you're going to tune it, and then you're going to race. So, I'm going to go through the tuning that you should use for your Yaris, how you should set it up. And how you should race, because that's also actually quite important. And probably best to leave this at a point in the game where you can just outright buy all the upgrades, like when money is not an issue whatsoever. So, go to Toyota. You see the Euro Edition, you don't want to buy the cheaper one, you want to buy the more expensive one. You can buy any car that you, uh, any color that you want, I guess. You can also use the pink one if you've unlocked that. There's a few ways to unlock that, actually. So in the tune shop, of course, we're going to buy the most expensive things we can buy. Full customized suspension. Brake balance. Um, now, the brake balance control is actually quite important. Um, I'll go through that when we get to the setup. Now, we want to buy the max upgrade for everything, pretty much. Um, now the question is, do you want to do NA or do you want to do turbo? If you have too much power, then you won't be able to accelerate and turn at the same time without your front wheel spinning, and then it will reduce your ability to do either of them. So, here we could buy the NA tune-up stage 2. Pretty much almost doubles our power. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that. Now drivetrain, we want to buy the max of course. Uh, clutch, like for example, clutch, triple plate, all this really does is make your gear changes faster. And that just helps you in straight line speed because there's less time when you're not accelerating between gear changes. Flywheel, I honestly don't even know what flywheel would be the best. I'm just going to buy the racing one. Uh, always buy the drive shaft carbon if you can. We can't, so I'm not going to bother. Full racing transmission, the important thing about this is your max speed. The One of the five races is a test course and you need the highest speed to win that, that's basically all you need to do. Limited slip, full customize. You don't even need to adjust the value of these, just buying it will do more than not doing anything. So don't be too worried. Now yes, you can buy the Turbo Kit Stage 2, I will actually buy it, but I will not install it. So this will be better if you're doing test course, because when you're at like pretty much full revs, higher gear and everything, it actually will kick in, but apart from that, it's overall less efficient. I am actually going to buy every single racing tire up until the medium. Because this might actually come in handy. I do not recommend buying any tires above medium. They just don't last long enough. The lightweight stage 1 and 2 are like the best things you can buy for any car. 3 is also very, very good, assuming you have infinite money. It's, there's no reason to not buy it. It's just a lot less valuable. It's more expensive and it reduces the weight. Alright, so we've got an overpowered Vitz RS 1.5. Now let's go into the Vitz race. So we've got Rome Circuit 2, Laguna Seca, Test Course, Special Stage Route 11 2, and then Grand Valley Speedway 2. Uh, very, very interesting tracks to drive such a weak car, but... Alright, so you notice that all the cars are exactly the same, and we've tuned our cars, so that should make this very, very easy, right? But actually, the Vitz RS race is the one race where it doesn't matter. I don't know why. I don't actually know if it gives all the opponent cars the same power as you. I genuinely don't know why your car doesn't get off the ground, but you can still set it up to drive better, so we're going to do that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is drop the TCS all the way down. I'm going to drop the active stability management all the way down. So I recommend always having TCS at 0 or 1. I always recommend having ASM at 0. Now, I will not adjust the limited slip yet. I think these are fine for what they are. The gear ratio, though, this is very, very important. Whenever you buy the full customized one, it will lower your gear significantly, so that improves the acceleration of your car. However, it decreases the top speed. So you'll cap out quite early. So to remedy this, I put the gear ratio, this bottom one, see the auto setting, I put it to whatever, around the middle, a bit higher. And then I go up to my sixth gear, and then I hold L1 until it goes all the way to the left side. And then I do the same for the fifth. Basically, this just means that, for all intents and purposes, the first five gears are pretty much 
what you want them to be and then the sixth one is just like a top speed gear and if you don't hit the top speed you can lower this you can go towards the right so you have more acceleration for that Brake balance, so this is actually very, very, very important. For a front wheel drive car, the front wheels are doing pretty much everything. They're accelerating, they're turning, and the back wheels aren't doing anything. However, all four wheels have brake depending on your brake balance. So what we do is front brakes all the way down to one, and then the rear brakes all the way up to 24, which is a max. And so this means whenever we brake, it'll work the rear tires and not the front. So as our front tires degrade from accelerating and turning, the rear ones degrade from braking. And that will even the tire wear between the front and the back tires. Suspension, this is probably the most important part of any car is the suspension. Uh, a few of these values matter a lot more than the other ones. So the spring rates, these are incredibly low. Ideally you want really stiff springs on racing cars. This is not a racing car though So we probably want somewhere around the middle. The stiffer your springs are the more stiff and stable your car is when turning Ride height your ride height should always be really 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 low Just to lower the center of gravity of your car again The exception is if you're rally driving you wouldn't want your car to explode on hitting a bump um, But we're not hitting speed bumps or anything so we can afford to have our car like really 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 low like, in this game, your car doesn't scrape against the ground and destroy itself or anything, so really no penalty to doing that. Now, shock bound and shock rebound, you can leave at 7. Um, the stabilizer, however, it stabilizes the front and the back of your car, the anti-roll. Um, the left and the right do roll as you're turning. The front and the back will roll as you're accelerating and braking. Um, so you want these to be pretty stable. I just put it in the middle. Pretty much every car setup, I have the front at 3 and the rear at 1.5. Again, what the camber angle actually does is angle your tires inward. And what this does is when you're turning and your car is leaning away from the direction you're turning, then anytime you turn, your outer tires will have like perfect grip. Whereas if they're always straight, then when you turn, they'll be on an angle while you're turning. So the camber angle is to counteract that so that when you're turning, uh, the car is a lot, it performs a lot better. It probably is not perfect, but it's good. And that's pretty much it. That is how I recommend setting up this car. Alright, so now we actually have to win the race, which is uh, a bit harder than just setting up the car. We're going to have to implement some real driving techniques, and perhaps some Gran Turismo driving techniques, as in, you know, just outright destroying your opponent. Let's see how this goes. So you see the TCS flashing, so I let off the throttle a bit, and then pick back up. The car is also, it handles very, very well. You can see we are slower than the other cars. Um, despite the fact that we've actually really, like, upgraded the car. So you notice I gained speed on that corner, and it literally is just a matter of having the higher exit speed than the other cars. So even though it feels like the other cars are very, very strong compared to yours, um, they also have a very, very difficult time catching up. If you consistently exit corners at a faster speed than them, they can only go so fast. So, if you corner better than all these cars, you can just gain speed with every single uh, turn that you do. And you can also do stuff like, you can try to do bumper cars, I mean there I pretty much failed. But there's a lot of laps to gain and lose time anyway, so it really doesn't matter too much. As long as you don't have any, like, catastrophic accidents, you should be okay. The problem with, like, the FF Car Cup and this cup in general is that you're not really supposed to gain, like, a huge amount of time. Like, every other race, especially if you're in a Formula 1 car, you can just break away from the rest of the cars. These races aren't really like that at all. It's actually better off to just stay right ahead of them. Don't do anything too ambitious. Preserve your tires. Make sure you look in your mirror to try to stop them from taking over you. I mean, this is ridiculous. Like, we have a fully upgraded car and they just gain speed on us anyway. So, that's when you start to think, you know, it's a bit bullshit. You feel a bit less guilty about bumping them into the wall.
But as you can see, like for example, that corner, we um, we left the corner at a higher speed than they did. And see, they're really struggling to catch up to us. Because it doesn't matter what shenanigans are going on that makes those cars faster than they should be. They can't be faster than what they're actually set up to be for these races. Like, they're not going to suddenly turn into an Escudo on the street. They just can't do that. And as you can see, look, the other cars are all pitting in too. And that's very, very good for us. So the only car that's out is a car that has not pitted yet. Which means that they're going to lose time and then they're going to have to pit in. So being second here is absolutely fine. And all we have to do is drive like what we were before. But you know what? I'm very, very happy with the setup of this car. Um, the only difference, I think maybe the front tires I could afford to have a slightly more durable set. Um, because for the other tracks, such as the Special Stage Route 11, we're going to be wearing them more. So it will reduce our performance a little bit, but we want to avoid having red tires. So yeah. Alright, so I pretty much explained everything in terms of setup and race theory and strategy and whatever. But now we have to go through the individual tracks and what to do for them. So I will record each race and then provide you guys with the highlights. Most of Laguna Seca is the corkscrew actually. That whole section is very important. You can always go on the inside and play bumper cars. There's really nothing wrong with doing this, honestly. You don't have to, but you can. There's an art to it. I mean, you need to really know exactly what you're doing. Because I didn't change my tires for this race, but it should be fine. Throw your car in, brake and turn. Braking and turning, remember, especially when you have all the brakes at the rear, your front car can still turn just fine. Don't need to let off throttle. Your car's not fast enough to need to let off throttle to make that turn, so just full throttle it. And for the corkscrew, you should really know how to do the corkscrew. Slam the brakes once you hit this curb, and then turn in, and then you straighten the car up. Again, it wasn't perfect, but that's pretty much how you do it. This is very important. Make sure you have as much speed in that corner as possible. I would argue that little... little... That turn after the corkscrew is just as important because the idea of the corkscrew is to exit with, with as much speed as possible and then the turn after that is carrying that speed. Um, that is very very important when it comes to the corkscrew test with the Viper. The trick always with a car in front of you, just like real racing, is to get as close as possible and then wait until the main straight to draft it and overtake it. You can also just go on the inside and bump a car up. Literally, the only way we can lose this race is if we do anything stupid. So, just don't do anything stupid. Just take it home. Bring it home. That's... that's the way... That that's the expression. Yeah, that was good. That was nice. And that's Laguna Seca. Finishing pretty comfortably. I know a few seconds doesn't feel like a comfortable lead, but in this context, it really, really, really is. Race number three, here we go. So, um, we bought the turbo. What you can do is change your NA stage two to, well, NA, and then equip your turbo kit. You also can change your tires to the full the racing super slick if you want. I'm not going to do that, but before I forget, I'm actually going to change my front to the medium slick for a bit more durability. Two of the races after this are the Grand Valley and the Special Stage Route 11. Those are longer circuits, and if we want to pit in halfway through, our front tires will be dead before the halfway point. So, yeah. So, let's do that. Let's just do that before we forget it. Straight line speed will be fine. I'm literally just going to go in a straight line until the turn and then I'm gonna turn and then I'm gonna go a straight line again and yeah. Yeah, we don't need to know how much we beat them by. It'll just say plus one laps, so. Isn't that cool? Special stage route 11 two. This has to be the least common track that you see out of the ones you actually do see in the campaign. So yeah, we're gonna go through this track and the secrets to it and any like wall riding spots. 
First of all, again, at the end of a street, you can just straight up wall ride on the outside if you want to. We're not really fast enough to do it right now, but you can, for example, like, bounce off the wall. This should be the longest race. Don't be intimidated by this. Really, it's not that scary. Okay, try to stick to the inside of the curb when you're going past the corner like that. If you're ever going too wide, I turn into the corner, flick the brake, and then after like a, a fraction of a second, I accelerate again. Now here's a good wall riding spot. Uh, just the end of here. Just bam. Ride that shit. Gain probably a good half a second just doing that. Here you're probably too slow to benefit from a wall ride, so I just take the corner normally. And you can wall ride here. It's a very good spot if your car's a lot faster, but it's not really that fast. I didn't change back to the naturally aspirated tuning, which is probably what I should have done, but it's probably still winnable. Again, that is like the worst thing that could happen in that corner. So in this situation, I'm trying to like throw the car in a little bit and then apply the throttle. At the end of the day, the straight line speed is pretty good, like once we're at 5th gear and pushing high revs. Close in towards the center, we bump the wall, so we lose some time there, but it's fine. We need to avoid hitting the wall here, that's the important part. Yeah, nice. And we can also... Not nah, too slow to squeeze in in the middle there, but it's okay. We gotta respect the gaps of these cars, you know, it looks very close, but they're not that close. Because every car is just so slow. Again, probably could just do this corner normally, it's probably better, but... Going the opposite way, like if this was normal special stage route 11, it's the best wall to wall ride. Maybe in another video when I go through this track, I can show you that. And yeah, we even take on the straight. Not sure if that would be possible without the turbo. The turbo makes all the cornering harder, but the straight line is better once you're actually off the ground. And you can see without any other car, like bot, squeezing us into the wall, it is a lot nicer to go through there. And now we're at the front. We're, we've got clean air, we don't have to worry about cars like crashing into us unless we lose a significant amount of time. So just, yeah, cruise and have some fun. Finally, it's over. With a 35 second lead. Alright, so. Here is the thing. I could show you how to beat this. But based on everything I've taught you in the last four races, you should know exactly what you're doing. I will just do a few Grand Valley laps to show you the circuit. In case you do actually want to win this. Now, I could have gone back to the naturally aspirated tuning. But, for these tracks where there's some long straights, this turbo actually works, it's not terrible. Um, I do think for the shorter circuits like Rome, it's probably still better to not use it. But here, we have a lot of time, like a lot of straights to like gain speed. Cut on the inside. Boom, what's he gonna do? Here, well, it only took us four or five corners to get in the lead. And yeah, I really don't know what else there is to say. Probably just finish this lap and call it. Just so I can show you kind of what the driving line is I take vaguely. Obviously I'm going too far on the inside here, but you do want to kind of graze that curb to that bit, and then on this, you cut through this, you touch the curb. Try not to exit too wide there. Um, I, will, I will say though, grass, it doesn't matter too much in this game. Sand will kill you, but grass doesn't matter. 
you lose some grip, but your car still goes fast enough that if you cut grass, it really doesn't matter. Look, like that. Like, the car's just fine. And you get the billboard behind you, which is cool. See, the prize cars for this are that Supra. There's also a... This Altezza race car. Otherwise, you got the Castrol Tom Supra, which is very, very iconic. Of course, it's the car that's featured in the intro of this game. And there you go, there's the infamous Pink Yaris. You actually win the Pink Yaris from a couple other events in the game. One of them is actually, I believe, in the Beginner FF League. It's three two-lap races, and you win the Pink Yaris with that. So I recommend doing that and then keeping that rather than selling it. And then for this race, you can pick whatever you want. And if you theoretically wanted all of these, you could do this again multiple times, but it's not really the most entertaining or thrilling race, so... Um, yeah, do whatever you want.